So today I want to talk about auto scaling Jenkins. Now auto scaling Jenkins isn't something uh, that's new. Um, I just really never got around to really sitting sitting down and like looking at it and, and seeing if it was really a good fit for us. But I went to DockerCon and I saw that Demonware, a company acquired by Activision, actually uh, scales their their CI, which is very very cool and, and very very you know unique and it makes a lot of sense uh, so one question that came up was really like you know how do you deal with uh, so many builds and they were like well we just auto scale or we'll figure out we figure out ways how to shard Jenkins to be able to get the throughput we need whenever we have a lot of testing coming through now for us uh, we we actually do use uh, Jenkins in the cloud but we haven't really uh, scaled it to that level. I think we just set up, you know, a, a fixed amount of, like our pool, our, our, our auto scale pool is, is actually pretty uh, fixed. So we do have times where it becomes very painful. Um, um, and normally for us, uh, we do have uh, CICD to a certain point. Um, we don't go all the way to production. A lot of times we want to do push button verification. So that's kind of what we do. Uh, but when you when you look at uh, when you are saying hey I want to be able to deal with the fact that it's the end of the sprint <laughs> because we run uh, sprint cycles and most teams are running either Kanban or they're running uh, a scrum or some form of agile and so we have these periods where uh, we try to kind of set you know these artificial dates of releases um, and now it's not completely, you know, uh, CD, but it does give us a little bit more structure. So there are certain times where uh, we just have tons and tons of components that are uh, going out at the same time, or tons and tons of changes that's going out at the same time. And we have to build and run through the full set of, you know, full suite of tests. And auto scaling Jenkins actually makes a lot of sense in that use case. So uh, this will be something that uh, we're going to uh, give a try and investigate if it's really a good fit for us because the one thing about auto scaling with Jenkins is that um, there is a physical cost associated with that you know if you're normally running five hosts you pretty much know what your host count will be or you you oscillate anywhere from like two to five nodes you pretty much know what your bill is but when you want to scale up to 50 or 100 nodes to reduce your build time uh, that actually may be a lot more expensive <laughs> and so uh, I mean you can figure it out uh, but that, that's kind of something that uh, you may not be aware of at the end of the month or the end of the day and you see the bill and you're like, oh, wow, our bill went from four hours to like 20 minutes, but it cost us like 30 grand. <laughs> so it, it's trade offs there, but um, I'm going to investigate a little bit more and I'm probably going to have a follow up video to kind of uh, talk about what results we found and uh, what we learned by uh, trying this. But that's what I learned at DockerCon, which was pretty cool. And uh, if you have any questions about scaling Jenkins or Jenkins in general or even Docker, please ask. I'm definitely here to, to help. And, you know, I love the stuff as much as you. Okay. Bye.